Okay, so we started talking about stoichiometry and BCA tables last block. So in this little video, I'm going to go through some different types of problems that you're going to see. So we'll start with what we ended with last block, with the calcium hydride question. So I'm going to use a BCA table for this. And I'm going to read my question. How many moles of hydrogen gas? So I underline hydrogen gas, because that's what I'm going to look for. Will be produced if 2.5 moles of calcium hydride react according to that equation. So what do I know about everything before the reaction starts? Well, I know I have 2.5 moles of calcium hydride, because I was told that in the initial problem. I know before a reaction takes place, that I have no products. Nothing is at all is mentioned about H2O. Since I have no information about H2O, I can assume I have more than enough H2O for my reaction. So I just write excess. So now we're going to go ahead and solve this problem. So the first thing that's going to happen is I'm going to use up all of my calcium hydride. So at the end, I'm not going to have any, which means I have to use up 2.5 gram moles, excuse me, 2.5 moles of calcium hydride. So to figure out how much H2O I'm going to need to use up 2.5 moles of calcium hydride, I look at the balanced equation. The balanced equation, my recipe tells me that one mole of calcium hydride needs two moles of H2O. So if I have 2.5 moles of calcium hydride, I'm going to use up 5 moles of H2O. If I use up 1 mole of calcium hydride, I'm going to make 1 mole of calcium hydroxide. So if I use up 2.5 moles of calcium hydride, I'm going to produce 2.5 moles of calcium oxide. If I start with one mole of calcium hydride, I'm going to make two moles of H2. If I start with 2.5 moles of calcium hydride, I'm going to make five moles of H2. So at the end of the reaction, I'm going to have extra H2O still, but I know I used up five moles of H2O. I also made 2.5 moles of calcium hydroxide and five moles of H2. So my question asked about H2. So the answer to the question, how many moles of hydrogen gas will be produced, would be 5 moles of hydrogen gas. So that's the answer based on all the work I did in my BCA table. Now, what happens if you get coefficients that aren't nice ones and twos, because we did see those before. So now we have this combustion reaction, and we have 15s and 12s and 6s. So we start off the same way. I'm going to set up a BCA table. How many moles of water? So let's underline water, because that's what I'm looking for. If, if 0.45 moles of oxygen react, so 0.45 is going to go right there. So what I know before I start anything, before the reaction takes place, I know that there is excess C6H6, which is benzene, because they don't tell me anything about benzene in the problem. There's no mention of benzene in the question, so I just put excess there. I know before the reaction takes place, there are no products, because I have to have a reaction take place to get any products. So the next thing I know is that I'm going to use up all of my O2. So in the end, I'm going to use up all the O2. So now I have to use my mole ratios to come up with the ratio of oxygen to everything else. Well, 15 is a really hard number to work with in your head. So what we're going to look at is, I know 
I'm going to have to multiply 0.45 times something. So over here, I know I'm going to have to take 0.45. And what I know, and we always look at it in this order, 2 moles of C6H6 is going to require 15 moles of oxygen. So what I can do, and that's going to go away, so that's going to be a negative in front, is take whatever moles of oxygen I start with, and I'm going to multiply it by 2 fifteenths. So the number that goes on top of the ratio is the coefficient from the column I'm in. The bottom number of the ratio is the coefficient from what I was given to start. So 0.45 times 2 divided by 15 is 0 0.060. So 0 0.060 moles of C6H6 are going to get used up. And in the end, I'm still going to have extra. But if I wanted to know how many moles of C6H6 were used up, it would be 0 0.060. I can do the same thing on the product side. I know I'm going to add, and I have to take my 0.45. So the column I'm in is a CO2 column. The coefficient for CO2 is 12. The coefficient for O2, which is where the 0.45 came from, is 15. So this tells me how many moles of O2, or CO2, that I'm going to produce. 0.45 times 12 divided by 15 equals 0.36. So that means afterwards I'm going to have 0.36 moles of CO2. And I'm going to do the same thing with water. I have 0.45 moles of oxygen, and the ratio is 6 waters to 15 oxygens. That is equal to 0.18. Taking 0.45 times 6 divided by 15 is 0.18. So that tells me 0.18 moles of water will be produced. So if I look at my after table, or after row, excuse me, in my BCA table, I have extra C benzene, I've used up all my oxygen, I made 0.36 moles of CO2 and 0.18 moles of H2O. So the answer to this would be 0.18 moles H2O. Now, most of the reactions you get will not have these really big coefficients, but that's how you deal with the big coefficients. It's a ratio of the column that you're in to the column where the number came from, and that will always work. Okay, so that's one thing we can look at. The next thing we could look at is something like this. So the difference between this and the calcium hydride problem I did before is I have it says how many moles of hydrogen gas, so that's the same, will be produced if 15 grams of calcium hydride react. So when I go to do my BCA table, I cannot put 15 in there because 15 is a number of grams and I need a number of moles. So now what I have to do is a quick gram to mole conversion. 15 grams of CAH2, one mole is 42.10 grams of CAH2, and if you do that math, you will get 0.356 moles. That is the number that has to go in for CAH2, not 15. So 3, 5, 6 goes in there. And everything else is going to look exactly the same because I still have excess water and I still have no reactants to start. When I run my reaction, I'm going to end up with no calcium hydride. So I'm going to subtract out the calcium hydride. 
if I react 0.356 moles of calcium hydride, I'm going to need 2 times 0.356 moles of calcium hydride, which is 0 0.712. 0 0.356 times 2, 0 0.712, that's how much water I use up. I'm going to produce 0.356 moles of calcium hydroxide and 2 to 1 ratio up here between hydrogen and calcium hydride. So I'm going to add 0.712 moles of H2. So at the end, I still have excess water. I have 0.356 moles of calcium hydroxide and 0.712 moles of water. The question says, or excuse me, not water, hydrogen gas. It says moles of hydrogen gas, moles of hydrogen gas, 0.712 moles of hydrogen gas. There's my answer to that one. So that's if I start with grams and end with moles, I have to convert from grams to moles, do my BCA table, and then look for my answer. The last variation that we can do with this is I look at my question, I'm reacting sodium and chlorine to produce sodium chloride. How many grams of sodium are required to produce 35 grams of sodium chloride? So there's a couple of things going on here. The first thing is I have numbers of grams. So I'm going to have to do some gram to mole conversion. <clears throat> so, the next thing is, I'm looking for grams of sodium. Now, I'm told I produced 35 grams of sodium chloride. So, since I know how much product's going to go in, the, well, the, I, that, I'm going to be filling in my after row. But the very first thing I need to do is figure out how many moles of sodium chloride 35 grams is. So 35.0 grams of sodium chloride. I know one mole of sodium chloride is 58.45 grams of sodium chloride. And when I put that in my calculator, I get point five nine nine moles of sodium chloride. So now I know how many moles of sodium chloride I have, but let's think about where does this number have to go. So this is the product. This is what's produced. So what I have been told is what do I have at the end? I have 0.599 moles of sodium chloride. I started with zero moles of sodium chloride. So that means I had to add 0.599 moles of sodium chloride. So at the end, if I'm looking at how many grams of sodium are required, we know that at the end, I'm going to use up all that sodium. So if I look at my ratio, now I'm kind of working backwards. So if I have an amount of product, I just work from the bottom up instead of the top down. So at the end, I have 0.5599 moles of sodium chloride. I have zero moles of reactant. And I know to make two moles of sodium chloride, I required two moles of sodium. So to make 0.599 moles of sodium chloride, I had to lose 0.599 moles of sodium chloride, which means I had to start with 0.599 moles of sodium chloride. Now in this case, since they didn't ask me about chlorine, I'm just going to leave that column blank. So in order to, so basically what I just did was start at the bottom and work my way up. So start, because I know the products, I start at the bottom, work my way up. If I was asked for how many moles of sodium 
I needed, that would be 0.599. But I was asked how many grams of sodium, so now I have to do a mole to gram conversion. 0.599 moles of sodium. I know one mole of sodium is 23 grams of sodium. So if I multiply 0.599 times 23, I get 13.8 grams of sodium. So it took, if I start with 13.8 grams of sodium, I'm going to get 35 grams of sodium chloride. So you just have to pay attention to what you're being given. Is it a reactant? It goes in the top. If it's a product, it goes on the bottom row. So uh, other than that, we always, the change row always works the same. You just look at the coefficients in the equation to figure out what numbers go there.